Hi there, I'm Tim at Limey Bills and I'd like to share with you a simple circuit for adding flashing or pulsing lights to props. I've seen a couple of fantastic videos by Punished Props and Can We Cosplay that cover some really cool lighting basics, but I'd like to share with you in detail a really useful, cheap and easy to put together circuit that doesn't require any programming, which is great. And best of all, if you want to build along, you won't need one of these just some breadboard and a few components. I'll start by showing you the effect in action so that you can see if it's something that would be useful to your own project. This circuit allows you to have a nice slow pulse effect up to a rapid muzzle flash. Here are the parts that you'll need. And I usually order these in sets of 10 very cheaply, just for a couple of quid each. You'll want a 555 timer, a transistor, a capacitor. Here I'll use a 1000, 470, 220 and 33 microfarad to showcase the range of this circuit. A 1K resistor, a 150 ohm resistor, a breadboard, a bunch of colourful breadboard wires, an LED. Mine happens to have a 150 ohm resistor attached to avoid the risk of burning it out when I run tests. And finally, I'll be using a 4.5 volt power supply, though 3 volt should be fine. Okay, let's do this. Our circuit will be built around this little critter, the 555 timer. The semicircular indentation here denotes the front of the component. If you imagine this is the bonnet or hood of a car, and if you walk around the car in this direction, the pins are numbered one, two, three, four, around the trunk or boot, five, six, seven, eight. Just eight little guys hanging around the car, waiting for a ride. Keeping the semicircular indentation to the left. Place the 555 timer so that it straddles the two sides of the breadboard. This recess along the breadboard separates the two halves from each other. Vertical columns are linked. As are the positive row here and the negative row here, as well as here. But this column is separate from this one. Horizontally, these are not connected, only vertically. So anything in the column of pin one will be linked together as if soldered. I'm connecting the power supply, this three AAA pack, which I'll leave in the off position for now. to the positive of the breadboard here and the negative here. Pin one of the 555 timer goes to battery power supply negative. Pin two of the 555 timer has the 1K resistor going to pin three. And the capacitor 33 microfarad value we'll put over here so it's easy to swap out later. Actually let's have that a little closer to fit in the frame. The light coloured strip on the side is the negative symbol to indicate which of its wheel legs is the negative one. 
we need to take the positive leg to pin two of the 555 timer. And the negative to the negative power supply. Pin three of the 555 timer already has the 1K resistor there. And pin four goes to the positive of the power supply. Pin five of the 555 timer is not connected to anything. Pin six links over to pin two. We'll place this transistor over here. With flat side toward us and the curved side away. The middle leg goes over to pin six of the 555 timer. Pin 7 also goes nowhere. Pin 8 connects directly to the positive of the power supply. Then we can join the left leg of the transistor to power positive. and put a 150 ohm resistor from the right leg of the transistor to where our LED will be. In this case, somewhere it will be more visible. You don't need another resistor on your LED like here. Just connect the longer positive leg to the 150 resistor and the negative shorter leg to the negative power supply. Now, if we turn the power back on, This rapid flash effect is really useful in circuits like this. Here's what happens when we swap the capacitor values out. Two twenty. Four seventy one 
1000. A really cool range to the effect there. We'll put the 33 microfarad back to show how we can add a trigger switch to this circuit. We can interrupt the negative connection from the circuit to the battery pack by moving the power supply negative over here. Connect the momentary switch from the circuit to the negative power supply. Now, when we hold down the switch, and three hours later, when I realize the capacitor isn't even connected to the circuit properly, Holding the switch activates the light. You can also use a latching on off switch. I don't have one set up for testing on the breadboards, but If I put the battery negative through the middle pin, and join the circuit to one side of the switch, and if I'm careful not to let those two touch, now you can turn the light on and off. And there you have it. 